Welcome today to our podcast. Today we're doing an introduction to the different sales team members here at Nexus IT. Today I have the lovely pleasure to be speaking with Mr. Joe Nice. Appreciate it. How you doing, yeah. Jake? Good. How are you? Good. Good to be here. Yeah. Glad to have you. So really what our goal here to do is to give you, our audience, a good introduction to who our team members are, what they do, what makes them tick, what makes them happy. <laughs> so That's a deep question. Yeah. That's a deep question. Yeah. So just as a way of introduction, obviously we're Nexus IT. What we do is outsource IT services for small, medium business, small, medium enterprise. We take care of things like infrastructure, support services, cybersecurity, et cetera, a lot of Microsoft stuff. And that's what we do day in and day out. We love helping customers, and that's what makes it successful. So to kick things off, Joe. Okay. Well, here we go. A here nice go. fun like question it. is share with us what you do here at Nexus IT. What's your day-to-day -day life? What makes you tick? You know, so the day-to-day -day life is, you know, life of a salesperson. It's you know, what I've been, you know, for the past 25 years. And, you know, day-to-day -day is uh, grabbing new business, uh, Microsoft renewals, Chrome renewals. I mean, it was just, just a whole bunch of day in, day out, you know, putting out fires. And part of the most rewarding part for me is just keeping clients happy. You know, it's always, you know, just getting in there asking the hard questions and just trying to, you know, make sure that, because no one's happy during a fire, right? Oh, no. I mean, you know, when your house is burning down or your server's on fire or your computer doesn't work, they're not happy, right? Yeah. And it's kind of what makes a good account managers is uh, just taking responsibility and reaching out and saying, hey, we're here while your house is burning down. Yeah. <laughs> what I think is cool, I mean, Joe's a humble guy. So like he said, he's been in the business for a long time. He's owned several businesses himself. And Joe does truly care. The customers that he works with, they know when something happens, good, bad, or ugly, they know where to go for help. Yeah, absolutely. And Joe's that source for help, and which I think is cool. I think, you know, in, in a lot of traditional sales organizations, it's very transactional. I bring you in, you get put into the system, and you're kind of, you know, off to the races. Maybe you'll talk to your sales team again, but typically not. You better like your salesperson because I'll be working with you for a while. <laughs> yes, which is awesome. And that's what makes us great. So going back to, you know, you said 25 years in sales. What got you into sales? Why? So, well, I don't really know the reason why. It was, it was almost like you better earn some money. And father owned an insurance company. I won't name the name. It was a pretty big insurance company. And, you know, I was 17 and, you know, I had the mullet going on. So I was. <laughs> Fly. <laughs> I was set for success, right? And be uh, risen. Yeah, <laughs> I was definitely, as the cool kids say, risen. I don't, can, can we say that? We can say it. Forgive us. Uh, no, my father was like, um, "You need to get a job," and uh, I was working construction at the time, and he said, "You know, just come and sell for me." And so we were selling um, insurance annuities, and my job was to go and bird dog these accounts and you know, set appointments. And so you know, the first year was set appointments, and definitely. That's hard work right there. Hard work. And, uh, you know, so I turned them over to the, the account manager's team. And what I saw was the account manager's team was making a whole bunch more money than I was. I mean, I was doing the 90% of the work that people don't want to do, getting hung up all the time. And I had, had a lot of good success right there. And uh, that's what got me into sales is uh, just helping people. And it was definitely a learning experience for me. That's for sure. Yeah. What's cool is I've, I've known Joe for 15 plus years. I was a customer of his. Yeah. Yeah. And what's really cool to me is I do think sometimes the sales salespeople can get, you know, like a bad rep, you know, like a used car salesman. Mm -hmm. And working with Joe has been so the opposite. I that, appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. That, oh, how the turntables have turned. <laughs> <laughs> but Joe is just one of those people who he makes you feel like he's providing a real solution versus – you know, just trying to get you to buy something. Yeah. His process is not one of, you know, we joke about it all the time, commission breath. Yeah. And we recently did some hiring, and one of the things we were looking for is who has commission breath because yeah. we, we don't want that. You definitely don't. Yeah, I mean, the uh, client feels it. You feel it. Everyone feels it. You know, the guy's just trying to make the sale, and that's not a recipe for long-term success. I mean, you and I have been known each other for 15 years and you know i believe we've developed a relationship and a bond 
from a business aspect, right? And yeah. you know, it's turned into more of a more of a friendship now. So yeah. which is you know, it it's just cool. It's just, you know, really cool where we're at today. I agree. I agree. So what are some of the biggest challenges you've faced in your career, both in sales and leadership? What are some of those things and how have you overcome them? Oh, well, so, I mean, you know, from like a client perspective side is, you know, when we go into these accounts and, you know, they're looking to rip off the Band-Aid, replacing their IT infrastructure, replacing their IT staff, um, it's just not designed well. There's a lot of money that's been misspent and not spent wisely and it's just a bad solution. And, you know, you and I go in there and, you know, we kind of tear everything down to the foundation, mm -hmm. uh, down to the ground level. And, you know, we have to rebuild it. And it's, it's definitely a process. And, uh, you know, through that process, you, you have to have your clients trust because, I mean, honestly, things go south quickly. Yeah. <laughs> and when they go south, you know, you better be there and you better have a qualified team behind you that you trust because it's not an eight to five job. Uh, this IT industry is 24-7, 365. Yep. And so to me, that's one of the biggest challenges just with IT. It, it definitely takes not saying that everyone can't do it. A lot of people can do it, but you rarely get to be able to turn off your cell phone. Yeah, I love that you say that because I think sometimes what we in the IT industry don't really broadcast and quote unquote get credit for is, is that we always need to be available Yeah, and we always need to be ready. I mean, you think of like plumbers, they need to be ready, yeah. but typically they come in, they do their job and they're out and done. Mm -hmm. We are like that. Hey, we're there for every flush. You know, <laughs> we're there for every flood. You know, I always like to say, you know, we're just not trying to compare ourselves to firefighters because they're a lot braver than we are. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're glorified firefighters because, you know, their house is burning down, their server's on fire. Well, you know, next IT is there. So. Yep. Yeah, we're there during the fire and then we'll fix it. And hopefully those things don't continue to happen. But again, like you said, things do happen. And we don't control everything. We wish we did. But if I controlled everything, you know, is this what I'd be doing? You know? This is true. Ho hopefully yeah. I'd still be a good guy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so next, can you share a particularly rewarding memory here at Nexus that is something you could share? Like a particular client? like a and Anything. Anything that you find rewarding and why that was rewarding. Mm, okay. I have one in mind if you don't. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, there's so many. What do you have in mind there? Just a recent-ish okay. win of okay, a, but, okay, a bigger yeah, customer. Uh, yeah, that's okay. My mind was going there too, but I didn't want to like really. <laughs> oh, I that, I love blowing that one up. Okay. All right. Well, you know, the good thing about Nexus is, is we have a great support staff. And when you reach for a new type of client to get, and, you know, because you feel confident in the team, the leadership that you're really confident in. You know, but more than that, I mean, leadership is great, but it's the day-to-day -day people, the help desk, support staff, the incredible Microsoft certifications that our staff has, the project team, which is amazing. You can actually go out and reach just a little bit deeper than what everyone's actually kind of reached. And I didn't do it. You know, the team did it. In fact, you did it. So this is our victory, okay? I <laughs> yeah. mean, you know, I don't like talking about myself, you know, right? <laughs> He's a very so, humble guy. So, no, no, it's just, you know able to land one of the largest contracts here at uh, Nexus is, although they're not our largest. Yeah, true. But actually, you know, getting there and trying to beat up the other sales guy, right? Trying to put my mark up there was, you know, just kind of nice. Like, hey, guys, I'm knock, knock. I'm here. Yeah. Right? And one thing I think that has been really cool, I like using this example almost as a case study for us internally. This is, like you said, it's not our biggest customer. You know, it's in the top several customers, yeah. you know, top 10 yeah. size wise. But what to me is so unique is we're having to help rebuild a lot of their infrastructure, kind of a ground up approach, which typically when we take over even big customers, we're taking over an existing environment mm -hmm. and then, then we're tweaking as we go. And this yeah. is kind of a, we have to kind of rip and replace and start from scratch. You know, starting from scratch, and it's multifaceted. It's not just support. It's infrastructure. It's cabling. It's endpoints. It's audio, video. Yeah. It's Microsoft. So much work. I mean, so much work. <laughs> and, you know, just a lot of projects coming out of this one client. It's very challenging. It just feels good to 
ink that on paper and said, you know what, let's go get this done. Yeah. The other part that's really cool about this in particular customer is we have a feedback system. It's called Smile Back that, you know, as we're doing tickets and those sort of things, they have an opportunity to say, hey, we're doing good or hey, we're doing bad. Mm -hmm. And we've overwhelmingly got great results from this customer. I, I just want to shout out our frontline support staff. Um, I'll just tell you guys, it was 100% smile back yeah. on that. And that's Nexus IT. And, you know, that's putting confidence in your frontline workers. Yep. And, uh, you know, the good thing about our support staff is they care. Yeah. I've walked by and, you know, some of them probably give me the uh, stink eye a little bit, but they're on the phone with these clients and just hammer it out with them. You know, so kudos to them yep. because I'm not the one doing the work. Uh, yeah. You know, they, they're the guys that are doing the work and just – Phenomenal experience for our client. Yeah, I, I think this is one of those ones that it was fun from the beginning to really understand what the needs were, really dive in with our projects team to understand what this migration would look like, go through all the different pieces, and then really prep the team. That's why, to me, such a big deal is not necessarily the size of the customer or anything like that, but we took something that was a little out of the box we explained it really well with the customer. So we all felt really good. The team felt really good. And the synergy has just been incredible all the way through. Yeah. And that to me just shows we're a growing organization and we're growing fast. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times growing pains can really kill you. Well, you know, you mentioned that, you know, you plan and you collaborate with the client and you get on the same page and then it's time to go to work and then change order after change order after this didn't work. And, oh, well, by the way, this didn't work. And you have to come up with a plan on the fly with the client to, to have a smooth transition. That's another kudos to the projects team for, you know, being a little bit moldable, pliable, and uh, saying, okay, well, if we continue down this road, it's not going to make any sense. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's going to cost the client a large amount of money. Hey, let's step back from what we talked about and let's kind of swerve to a different lane here and shift gears and get us back on track, get us within budget. Yeah. And actually, I think we're going to come under budget. Exactly, which is awesome. Again, like shout out to the team. I mean, we work with some of the best engineers, I would say, in the world. But, you know, for sure in Utah or, or the Western United States on our projects team. And engineers who know what they're doing, having them change from the plan that they made because of different variables is not easy. Yeah, Because, you know, they're, quote unquote, they're always right. But our team has been like, okay, this is change. Here's what we need to do. It doesn't matter who is right. In the end, the experience of the customer is the most important. And that's what our team's focused on. And that's like our North Star. Yeah. And because of that, this has been such an awesome experience. Even when there has been, quote unquote, hiccups or changes because there's variables we didn't know about, we're able to solve them easy. Another shout out to Nexus. I mean, I hope we're not boring you guys, but I mean, you know, the good thing is, is like, the one thing good to work around here is you better put your pride down and you better put your ego aside. Yeah. So that's just technicians are notoriously territorial and there's only one way to do it and it's their way. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all different ways. Than and they're all different that. ways. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but the good thing is, is, you know, they all come together, you know, we all kind of throw it in the pot, mix it up together and it comes out pretty good. And, you know, they uh, really know how to come together and, and uh, put forth a good solution, which makes us look better. Yeah. Right. They make our job easy, Jake. Yep. And just a shout out to the sales team in particular as well is we're very competitive people. Just a little bit. Just, just a hair. <laughs> but I have never worked with a sales team that didn't want each other's success so much that we all want each other to win. Mm -hmm. Now, does that make us get motivated to beat that person? Sure. We're, everyone wants to gain the extra ground. Mm -hmm. But every win each other gets, it's there's a true high five and like, hey, I'm really excited for yeah, you, which is amazing. It is. You know, I root for these guys to catch me, okay? <laughs> no, <I'm> not, <laughs> I'll just go ahead and say it, right? And, uh, you know, I know I have a target on my back. He does. Yeah. And even though, you know, they want to come get me, I, I'm just trying to set the bar higher and higher and higher. And so... Mike, that's for you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Join us on our side of the desk, right, yeah. Mike? <laughs> All right. So are there any books, podcasts, or other resources for sales and leadership that you would suggest to others? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. So 
great book would be Never Split the Difference uh, by Chris Voss. Amazing book. I mean, if you really want to understand what you're dealing with, that's definitely one of them. One of my personal favorites is uh, Gap Selling by Keenan. You know, I uh, read that about three years ago, read that two years ago, reread it a couple other times. It's hard to implement. That's probably uh, transformed my sales process just to kind of know where you're at within each stage of the process. As the other ones would be, I mean, personally, I'd have to go with specifically Ecclesiastes and uh, Proverbs. I think you get a lot of wisdom out of that when you read those books. I don't care if you're religious or not, but read those two books. And, uh, you know, those wisdom books really teach you that, you know, life is short and everything is vanity above all vanities. And we don't matter at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just do a good job while, you know, while you're here and just be present. And, you know, just give it your all, right? And so, yeah, those four books right there. Thank so, you. Yeah. Well, I think that, I mean, just to speak a little bit to Joe, I've, like I said, I've known him for a long time. One of the words I would use to describe Joe is generous. Mm-hmm. He's a generous person. Mm-hmm. And that is weird when it comes to a salesperson. Because <laughs> salespeople, yeah. they want everything. They want their stuff. Yeah, yeah. Which, of course, you want that winning mentality. But I can't tell you how many times that we've had a lead come through or something like that someone else was working on, but Joe has got it farther down the process and is like, Oh, this was actually yours and gives it over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No problem. I mean, who does that? I mean, again, such a generous person and you can see, you know, what he's learned throughout his life and what's made him successful in his career. Cause when you do those sort of things, the universe knows and it pays you back. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. So, no, I appreciate the kind words there. So. Yeah, you deserve <laughs> it. So how do you balance your professional responsibilities in your personal life? <laughs> uh, turn off the cell phone after 5 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> turn the pager yeah, off. Yeah, <laughs> turn the pager off, right? You know, that's always a weird one for me because when you're chasing deals, it's go time. You're on. Yep. And so you're working six, seven days a week, and you're working at nighttime. What needs to be done, just go get it done. You have to put in the work. To balance it, you just hope for a little bit of micro breaks in between that. So I guess I'm always working. Yeah, not all the time, but most of the time. You know, when you have deals, you just go get them done. You do what it takes to get that that needs to be taken care of. Yep. Yeah, Joe and I are similar that way. We it, It's hard to turn it off. Yeah, it is hard to turn it off. So but, I'm probably not the best one to ask for a work-life <laughs> balance there. So... I think, too, there's different phases of balance where sometimes work needs more. Mm-hmm. It more needs to be focused on work during a big project mm-hmm. or something like that. And then there's for sure times with family or whatever it may be that it's like, hey, I, it's time to put the balance over yeah. there. And to me, it, it's more of a balancing act than having pure balance because I don't know how you could have 50-50. Yeah. But, you know, it's like a, it's a balancing act of like I'm taking care of what's mm-hmm. most important at yeah. this time. And, you know, things I do personally in my life, there's a couple of days and, and, you know, certain days in the week, you know, it's blocked off. Yeah. And, you know, that's my time. It's, that's where I'm like, OK, you know, I have something scheduled. This is what I'm doing. And, you know, I'll go to work after five o'clock right now. This is what I'm doing. Yep. My last question. What do you do for fun? Outside, oh, that's an easy outside one. Outside of that, work. Yeah, I, yeah. I know the answer. Oh, yeah, you know the answer. I'm a hopeless golfer, okay? It's been in my blood since I started late, started when I was 20. It's, it's kind of a passion project for me. I'll never be good, right? But, you know, I, <laughs> great, I should yeah. say. But it's just fun to get out and, and play and compete with your friends, compete in uh, tournaments. I, it keeps me going. You know, my wife always says, you know, if I don't play for like a month or two, she just kind of looks at me like, you need to go play golf. And I'm like, I think I do. It's just, for me, it's my release valve. It just kind of makes me who I am. So, yeah. Well, it is cool that I luckily got to go in a scramble tournament with Joe and some of our friends over at WebCheck. And, great guys, by oh, the way. Great guys. Yeah, Greg and Jeff are awesome. But I didn't know how this works. I, I, I rarely <laughs> play golf. But in a scramble, you go... Off who shoots best yeah. and have some like, yeah. Joe on your team. It's like, man, we're pretty good. You know, we had a great time. <laughs> I absolutely love seeing you out there. And you have a fantastic swing for, I mean. For my third yeah, time only. Third time only. I mean, that was, Jake's got it. Watch out. It was cool to be with Joe. I was using a borrowed set of clubs. Mm-hmm. And I would ask him 
what should I use? And one thing that has always been something I've admired about Joe is he's a coach at all times, a true leader, someone who wants to help. Yeah. And it was just little things like, hey, use the five iron for this one or or use the pitch was the mm-hmm. pitch wedge was my yeah. like my go to a bunch. What was funny is when I was with Greg in my car and he's like, I was gonna use this one and what was cool is I was like, Joe's telling me what to use based off of my skill. And that to me is what a true coach does. It's like I'll meet you where you're at yeah. and I'll help you where you're at. Yeah. And that's like boiling down who Joe is, he's always willing to help where you're at. The whole time I knew he was a great golfer. And never once did I feel like I should be embarrassed or anything like that. Oh, not at all. No. And again, see, that as a super competitive person, he's like, oh, don't worry about it. And, you know, who does that? You know, golf now, I mean, you know, even though I play a little bit of competitive golf, not saying that I'm good, but I'm kind of enjoying just you got to hang out with the right people. Mm -hmm. And you and I, Greg Johnson and Jeff Smith, what a fantastic day that was. I mean, so... I've always liked those guys. Now I'm really in love with both those guys. Yeah. Uh, Greg and Jeff are, were saying that they're just incredible bunch of guys. You yeah. Know? I mean, I've never laughed so hard at a tournament. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Only a few choice yeah, words yeah, were used. Yeah. And, um... <laughs> well, that's really it for our time today. Again, thank you, Joe, for coming on and for being such an amazing person, amazing leader here at Nexus IT and a person who helps the entire organization. I appreciate that, Jake. Uh, at the same time, you know, it's also you. And I don't want this to be a love fest, but, I mean, <laughs> you know kind of what makes Nexus IT tick is Mr. Jake Hiller right here, okay? <laughs> so I'm uh, very appreciative of what you do here, and you and I uh, work really good together, and the rest of the sales team. Yeah. And just an incredible place to work. I'm glad to be here. Me so. too. This is the place for me, and, again, it's just so awesome to work with such amazing people. I'm very grateful to be able to interview each one of them and really let the world know who the best is that we work with. But we'll close out, which I always say when I close out, stay classy Salt Lake City.